Hello, and welcome back to our series, Learning Music Online. Today we pick up where we left off last week. We'll review the two scale patterns we've learned while adding one variation. We will review major versus minor chords and add minor minor sevenths, and build more on our scale progressions using the one, four, five, and five seven chord. Let's go. Let's quickly review our scales from last time. We currently have major with whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, and natural minor with whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. I haven't specifically pointed it out yet, but to go from a major scale to a natural minor scale, you lower the third, sixth, and seventh notes a half step. This relationship extends to the other types of minor scales. Let's examine natural minor a little closer first. It comes up pretty often in music, but there are several variations that are slightly more common, and today we're going over the more popular of the two, the harmonic minor scale. Here's the only difference between natural minor and harmonic minor. For the harmonic minor scale, you take the natural minor scale and raise the seventh note a half step back to where it was in relation to the major scale. Here's a natural minor. And here's harmonic minor. We will discuss why harmonic minor is more popular once we get into the chords section, but suffice it to say that it works better within music. Now we'll review major versus minor. What is the quality of this chord? Major, very good. And this one? Major again, good. And this? Minor, nice. And finally, this one. Major again. Now we'll do some comparison tests. Which of these is minor? One or two? Two, correct. And these? One, yes. Now which of these is major? Two again, right. And these? Two one more time. In case you forgot, here are the qualities of the chords built into the major scale. One major, two minor, three minor, four major, five major, six minor, and the seven is called a half diminished for a simple reason. The interval between the first and fifth note, in this case B and F natural, is not a perfect interval. Remember when I said when you, if you raise the top note of a perfect fifth, you get an augmented chord and lowering it would get you diminished? Well here, a perfect fifth from the B would be F sharp. Do you raise or lower F sharp to get F natural? Lower it, yes. Therefore, we have a diminished fifth, which gives us a diminished chord. And with that, you know most of the chords that you'll ever see. The only other important chords for now are the sevenths. To refresh your memory, a seventh chord is when you take the usual triad and add another third on top. In other words, you add the seventh from the root. If it's a major seventh from the root, it's called a major seventh. And if it's a minor seventh from the root, it's a minor seventh chord. Here's the only weird part. When you mix and match major sevenths with minor and major chords. For instance, if you have a major third and a major seventh, you have what's called a major, major seventh, because it's two majors. If you have a minor third and a minor seventh, it's called a minor, minor seventh chord. You don't often see minor, major seventh chords 
So we'll just skip those within this course. But the major minor seventh is the most important functionally of the chords. We now have enough knowledge of the major scale to show you why, and it will also lead us back to why harmonic minor scales are so common. But first, one more reminder. The five chord in a key always wants to lead back to the one chord. This is one type of cadence, or the ending of a musical phrase. There are others we will cover in future videos, but for now, this is the only cadence that matters. You can have a one, five, one progression, and that is a full progression by itself. Another common progression is the one, four, five, one progression. The four chord wants to lead to the five, which leads back to the one. You hear this progression and variations thereof in every classical piece you've ever listened to and many pop tunes, although because they don't follow traditional part writing, sometimes the cadences get weird. Now let's take a look at the five chord. What happens if, within a key, you add a seventh? In C major, that would give you G, B, D for your bass five chord, and adding another third on top gives you an F natural. What is the interval from G to F natural? You're right, it's a minor seventh which makes this a major minor seventh chord I mentioned before, also called the dominant. Here's what a one, five, seven, one progression sounds like. Hear how it sounds fuller and the resolution is stronger? The dominant chord, the five, seven, that particular major minor seventh is the most commonly used seventh in traditional part writing. It is also used as pretty much the only chord type in blues, although it doesn't function the same. The blues uses only dominance. Here's an example of a blues passage. It sounds weird compared to most of our music, no? It's because they took this chord that is very common as leading to a 1, and they didn't have it lead to a 1. And that concept of defying our expectations is what makes music interesting, and is the basis for the other cadences and variations on our bass chord progressions going forward. Here are a couple of examples of the 1, 4, 5, 7, 1 progression in different keys. You've probably noticed that each key has a different character to it. Some sound more hopeful maybe, or softer, or harsher, or any number of other words, and you would be completely correct. Whatever you think of each, composers have, throughout the years, debated and decided on and then changed what character and feeling each key signature has. As you gain experience playing in different keys on your own instrument, or guitar, or piano, or whatever, you will also form your own opinions on what keys sound good on what instruments and you will probably notice that what works on one instrument doesn't always work on another. This is due, in large part, to the physics of each instrument responding to different frequencies, and is actually really important to recognize when you're playing. We'll stop there for today. Thank you for joining us on this journey. I love you all. Stay safe, stay healthy. Maybe go study global politics for fun. I will see you next time.